everybody, today I'm going to my first ever conference event. I'm very excited, I'm quite honoured that my company are taking me along and there's like 335 people going I think from all different companies. It's called Erla, this one, so it's the Insurance and Reinsurance Legacy Association, which basically is the runoff market. I will explain it more later in this video, but for now I'm about to head off to Brighton on a train because that is where the conference is being held. I am staying at my parents' house this weekend. It's technically a business trip. I was offered a hotel in Brighton, but given my parents live so close, it made sense to just come back here over the bank holiday weekend. Yes, it is bank holiday Monday still, but I'm not doing too much work today. Today's not gonna be too hard going. It's already past four o'clock. We're going for an informal drinks meet up with some of the other delegates at Congress is what it's called, uh, the Congress, and then we're gonna go out for dinner in Brighton afterwards. When I say we, it's me and my fellow colleagues at my consultancy employer and some other people who are gonna be at the event, some of the contacts of the consultants that I work with. I'm nervous, I am very, very nervous. It's networking, it's meeting new people. There are young professionals there. There's a young professional group, which is why I am a member of Erla, and it's why I'm going along to this conference. I'm the young professional representative for my company. So it's an opportunity for me to meet other young professionals in the industry, lay the seeds of some professional relationships, I think, is the idea and just get my bearings hopefully not too much is expected of me it's my first conference it's, it's a learning opportunity i'm just going to try soak it all up over the next few days it's monday to wednesday i think that's everything i need to say oh the other thing is that i can't film while i'm at the conference sadly um i did ask because i always want to take you guys along with me but the conference is a private enclosed event it's under chatham house rules but I am allowed to keep you updated with my experiences. I'll be chatting to you on my way to the conference, on my way out of the conference. So I'm gonna show you as much as I can this week and hopefully give you some insight into what it's like at a conference. Cool, let's go. I am on my way to the station now with my chauffeur father in the driver's seat. My train is in 10 minutes, so hopefully that gives me enough time. I've booked my tickets in advance. I'm super organized, can't be late to the professional event, you know. Gotta go get my bearings and hopefully I've left myself enough time to do that before our drinks and dinner plans this evening. made it to Brighton and I'm just heading down to the seafront. I've got to say it does feel a little bit like I've come full circle because I went to sixth form college in Brighton so I used to get the train over here every day from my parents house and now I'm here on business. <laughs> Look at her go, she's transformed. I still feel like a child who should be popping off with my backpack into my chemistry lesson and here I am going to a general insurance conference. It's exciting, I am excited, but for the avoidance of doubt, I am totally out of my comfort zone here. I've been overthinking it all day, stressing a little bit, just worried about what I'm going to say to people and being basically in a room of people and not knowing everyone and everyone knowing each other. I am going with colleagues, but they're all a little bit more experienced than me. They're going to have contacts, they're going to be doing their thing and I don't want to disrupt their flow and stuff. I don't want to be a liability, so yeah. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself, but I think I'll hopefully enjoy it when I get there, hopefully. I have made it to the coastline. I am walking along the seafront in Brighton now. I have spotted my destination just ahead of me. So the conference is being held in the Grand Hotel. Pretty fancy location. I've actually been there once before many years ago for an afternoon tea. I haven't stayed there, but the conference is being held in there. So it'll be quite fun to have a little explore. I'm thinking I'm gonna pop in and I'm assuming you turn up and they give you like a name badge or something when you register. I don't really know how these things work. I also don't know where my free colleagues are going to be. They are all staying in a hotel, so I don't know if they're gonna be at the Grand right now, they're gonna be 
back in their hotel, if they're going to be exploring Brighton, who knows. I have got one of their numbers, so I will probably message them when I arrive just to let them know that I am there. This is West Pier behind me, which burnt down a few years ago. The current pier is back there, which has all of the amusements on. There's the Grand Hotel up there. That's where I'm heading. I think I'm gonna head on in. I've got some conversation starters in my back pocket. I'm actually okay once a conversation has started. The bit I hate the most is initiating a conversation. Small talk is normally all right. It's just the awkward phase where everyone's in groups and you're like, oh my God, I have no one to talk to. Uh, I need to find my way into a conversation. And that's the hard bit. And I think it comes with practice, but yeah. And I believe we're going to dinner at the salt room afterwards. This evening it's own dinner plans for everyone. So we've booked in at the salt room for 7.30ish, I believe. It's seafood, but quite fancy seafood. I'm told by my dad that I shouldn't ask for vinegar in the restaurant, which disappoints me because anyone who knows me knows I love vinegar. I am about to head in. Wish me luck. to the ladies powder room. I had a little bit of a mishap already in that they didn't have a name badge for me. I had everyone's name badges laid out and my one wasn't there. And I was like, I swear I've got a ticket and they recognize my name. But now I'm worried someone's impersonating me because the name badge wasn't there and they were sure they ticked it off earlier. So is there another page Y in the building? Maybe. It does look like I'm one of the first people to arrive though. Very few people had ticked their names off. None of my colleagues had picked up their badges yet. So I might just go hang around in the bar. I don't really know what to do now, but wait for, wait for it all to kick off. <laughs> because there is literally nobody there. I am just that keen bean who is there early. It's probably because I'm a local, you know, I know my way around. Maybe everyone else is lost on their way here, but it's so funny they couldn't find my name badge. I've got a makeshift one now. At least they've let me in the conference. That would have been a bit of a sorry start to my first conference if they said, sorry, you're not invited. It's funny because a similar thing happened to me when I arrived at university. They didn't have a um, access card for me when I started. right now because it is windy. I am on the seafront so it's slightly breezy um, but I am just walking back to the station now after the dinner. I feel a lot more relaxed now. I think once you get into the flow of things it is okay. I met up with my colleagues. I spoke to some new people at the drinks. I worked the room. Maybe that's a strong way of putting it. I'm not sure I worked it but I am um, I definitely spoke to new people, I faked some confidence, I found some other young professionals to talk to which was nice. Hopefully I'll recognise some familiar faces when it comes to the sessions tomorrow after tonight's drinks. And we went out for dinner, we went to the salt room, it was very tasty. I had oysters for the first time, I wasn't going to have any but then my colleagues found out that I hadn't had oysters before and they were like well you've got to try them. They're very understanding and happy to teach me. It's kind of embarrassing sometimes when you're younger and you don't have life experiences, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's been a good evening. I feel very grown up. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, I have made it home. I am back in my bedroom and I thought before I go to bed, I would do a goodie bag haul because everyone in attendance was handed out a little bag of goodies on arrival. And I haven't actually looked at what's in there yet. The one I'm most interested in is this box, which says the Gourmet Chocolate Pizza Company. And I love chocolate and I love pizza. So this, this seems like it could be the most exciting part of this whole conference. Oh my God, it is exciting. Look at this. That's chocolate. Riverstone International on the front of it, which is a company who I believe are sponsoring this event. They are active in the legacy market. My understanding is that Riverstone is a legacy acquirer, so they acquire legacy portfolios. I promise that I'm going to sit down with you all tomorrow, maybe when I eat my breakfast tomorrow, and talk you through just the background to this conference, the legacy market, what it's all about. Next thing. got a Davies notebook. I'm giving a lot of free promo to all the companies <laughs> sponsoring this conference. <laughs> Couple of pens, Davies and Eversheds Sutherland. FTI Consulting, little mini notebook this time. And finally, Swiss Re. I think it's like a cold bag, which is useful because I don't own one. So that's it. That's the goodie bag haul over. The drinks was good. Around 70 people turned up to the drinks, I reckon, today. It's funny because I've realised everyone asks similar questions and it is just chatting to people and everyone is there trying to do the same thing, build connections and honestly being honest with people, telling them how I'm new to the sector, I'm a student actuary, that's fine. I'm young, no one's expecting me to be a legacy expert so <laughs> I feel a lot more relaxed after the first evening. The dinner was so good. Octopus donuts at the Salt Room in Brighton, you have got to try them. I'm sorry, I said I was going to speak to you while I ate my breakfast. Turns out it was a bit of a rush this morning. I'm tired. This whole conference thing takes it out of you. There's not a lot of time for sleeping before you have to get going again for the next day. Um, we are whizzing up the road. This time, my mum is in the driver's seat. Yeah, I was saying it takes me back to the school days when I used to always be running late for trains and my mum would have to get me up the road fast. And yeah, she never enjoyed it. And <laughs> here we are though. I've never been too great at timekeeping, but I'm actually looking on pretty good time for this train that I'm getting. I said I'd give you an overview of the legacy market. Basically, insurers write some business, but some risks are very long tailed and it takes a long time for the claims to be reported. And then you have latent claims, things like asbestosis claims, which don't actually occur till many years after the policy was bought. Oh my God, there's a really cute border terrier in that car. Can you see that border terrier? Turn your head, turn your head. Buster, not Buster. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Buster. That's why he was so there, there he is, there he is. Oh, there he is. what a cutie. Anyway, basically insurers sometimes want to transfer the risk from their runoff portfolios, portfolios that they're no longer writing, runoff risk that is heavy on their capital, they've got regulatory requirements to hold capital for it, and sometimes they want to free up that capital and redeploy it for other things. They want to crystallise their results in their balance sheet and they don't want that uncertainty. So there's various different ways, different transactions in which they can transfer those risks to another entity. And that is what the legacy market is all about. You've got lost portfolio transfers, adverse development cover, insurance business transfers. There's more legal finality with those. And there's various different rules, for all the different jurisdictions in the world. And there's quite a lot to it. There's a lot to know. There's a lot of market players, kind of brokers, claims handlers, lawyers. You've only got about four minutes. Four minutes. Three four minutes, minutes. Three minutes, maybe. No. Okay. I'm going to get out this turn. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to go and focus on getting my train. But another exciting day. Okay, so I have made it to Brighton and I am walking down to the ground again from the station. Today is really the kickoff day of the conference. There's a full day of talks scheduled. I won't be going to all of them, but I'm going to go to as many as I can. 
kind of alongside this conference we've got client projects ongoing so I am going to need to set my laptop up and do a little bit of client work today as well to keep up with those deadlines so kind of priority number one today is to find somewhere where I can plug in my laptop because there is no way it's going to last with charge all day I'm definitely going to need a charging station they've got meeting rooms set up they've got a quiet space set up I could even sit in the kind of bar cafe area with my laptop that would work as well the highlight of the conference I think is going to be the gala dinner this evening where all the delegates all 335 of us will be eating a nice meal there's a drinks reception before I think and it's kind of smarter dress code as well so I've got my business casual shirt dress on right now but I've got a more evening dress black and white long to change into in my very big rucksack that's the other issue I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my rucksack it's a very big bag but I need my laptop and my makeup and my change of clothes and my notes and it all adds up outside for a little bit of fresh air. I've been working in a room without any windows this morning. A very fancy room but obviously a little bit a little bit dark so it's nice to see some daylight just for a brief 15 minutes. This morning's gone well. I've caught up with colleagues via a Teams call. I bumped into one of my other colleagues who's in attendance at the conference this morning. I actually went to a talk in the end. It was on regulation and there were some representatives from the regulators of the legacy market um, talking about where they might see regulation going, what certain regulatory reforms might mean for the market. So that was an hour long talk. There are a lot of people attending it. I took some notes for one of my colleagues who couldn't make it to the talk. I have just got out of the wind because I know that is going to screw up the audio of this clip. But right now I'm going to head back to the Grand. There's a buffet lunch. I've seen them bringing out food not long ago and it all looks quite good so I'm quite looking forward to it and it's a young professionals group open house buffet so I'm hoping I'm going to meet some other young professionals there. It's interesting being in the meeting rooms like there's lots of hushed conversations going on around you. I'm just getting on with my own work and minding my own business. I'm going to head back now though. Grand this evening. It is a similar time to when I was leaving yesterday evening, about 10 past 10. Just had a very nice dinner, the gala dinner, so I've got my smart dress on. It was pleasant, there were friendly people on my table, it was a dinner with kind of a seating plan. I will say the most daunting thing was getting to the drinks reception before dinner and I was a little bit late because my talk went on until six and then I had to get changed and do my makeup before the reception so I arrived at the bar and oh my god the number of people I'm gonna level with you I was very scared when I saw this huge crowd of people all in those of groups having chats over drinks because you just don't know where to start and like I don't know any of these people Finding my colleagues is an impossible mission in this crowd. You could barely make your way through the crowd. I was like, oh my God, this is so outside of my comfort zone. But I did speak to people. I did my best. I put on a brave face. Glad I made it through. It has been such a long day. It's not like yesterday when I wasn't over in Brighton until late afternoon. I've been over here since like half eight. I am tired and I've fallen to bed. Good morning everyone, it is the third and final day. Yet again, I'm in the car with my mum heading to the station. We're a bit more relaxed today than yesterday. Don't know why, we're about the same time, five minutes until the train, <laughs> but maybe we're used to it now. There's a couple of sessions I wanna to go to this morning. It's kind of got a Lloyd's London focus today, which is cool, quite interested in that since I did a fair bit of Lloyd's work in my old job. Not in the legacy market, but Lloyd's focused. I will say it, what I've noticed in these talks is not many people take notes. I'm sat there like writing everything down. Everyone else is just sat there 
not taking notes. I don't know why. I used to take notes. Yeah, well, one of my colleagues even asked me if I could send me, if I could send them their notes. So if, if I could send them my notes. So I thought, well, this surely is a good thing to do. But um, yeah, only two talks this morning. It all wraps up at lunchtime anyway. The sun has finally come out, bright and it's finally looking its best. Here we go, here's the brand. I now know where I'm going, I know the format of all the rooms now, I don't need no map. The train was super busy this morning actually. I don't know what it is about a Wednesday, but everyone's heading to Brighton. I'm gonna head in because it's course to nine. I need to log on. First talk I want to go to starts at 9.30 and talks I wanna to go to finish at 11. So I'm hoping I can catch that hour and a half this morning before getting on with client work. So yes, I am home done with my first conference whoop, whoop. i really didn't do much this morning other than go to the talks i went to the chairman's welcome session they gave a bit of a roundup of key topics that were discussed yesterday they spoke about their desire to increase diversity in the industry because i will say that the majority of people at this conference were male middle-aged older as well although there were a fair few young professionals there but i'd say the the young professionals who were there were predominantly from a small subset of companies who took a lot of people to the conference. Some companies had two, three, four people there. Some companies had like 20 people plus there. And it tended to be the companies who were sending more people to the conference who would send their more junior, younger professionals along. This morning, we had a talk from a representative from Lloyds of London. Lloyds is an insurance market formed of many syndicates and some syndicates now are specialising in legacy covers. There's a particular Lloyds thing called Reinsurance to Close, RITC. I don't really understand why to be honest with you and there's probably some sort of historical reasoning for this but the syndicates who operate within Lloyds essentially close at the end of each year of account and then reform as a new syndicate but typically at this stage it's always with the same capital backers and they're writing the same business so there really is no change in the syndicate's operations but they close as a legal entity and then reopen again for the next year of account and because of that there's this reinsurance to close three years i think after the business has been written for a year of account the syndicate reinsures to close all the remaining losses for that year of account because it wants to determine the profitability of that year of account and realize the profits that are attributable to the syndicate owners for that year of account something like that typically that business will just be reinsured into the subsequent year of account in the same syndicate but there are some cross syndicate transactions where another syndicate will buy the legacy book and the risk that's remaining and the other talk this morning had a few lawyers on the panel which was really interesting because they were talking about the court cases for various different types of claim things like asbestos claims were covered which are latent claims that are being reported many many years after the exposure first occurred abuse claims an interesting one was looking at group claims against sports unions for neurological damage from rugby and football playing so that could lead to insurers paying out on public liability policies. There were some people sharing their opinions still on Covid claims and claims on aviation policies as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war. Lots of interesting stuff this morning. I don't know if I told you much about the dinner yesterday evening. I was speaking to a claims handler who had been in the industry for like 25 years. I think they'd been in their current job. And I spoke to a lawyer who specialised in M&A deals, mergers and acquisitions that is. There was a girl who works in compliance so she'll be all up to date with all the regulations. 
surrounding these transactions. The food was good. I had the vegan option, so starter was a red pepper hummus. Main was Korean pan-fried cauliflower, I want to say. And dessert, this was the showstopper. It was chocolate brownie, like warm chocolate brownie with raspberry sorbet and raspberries and like raspberry puree. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you for joining me on my first conference trip. Comment down below if you've been to a conference recently or have got any coming up and let me know. Are you a seasoned conference attendee or are you a new conference attendee what are your thoughts on conferences do you enjoy them are they not for you do you have any tips for me for future conferences that sort of thing let's have a chat and i will see you guys soon with another video give it a like bye